Hello, in this video, we will learn how to write different programs on a 2D array. Now we have already learned what is 2D array in our previous video. If you are not familiar with it, you can watch our video first and then return to understand these programs better. Let's take our first program, which is to find sum of all elements in the array. Let's take this array as an example. Here we will assume that the array is passed to us as a function parameter. You can also plug the code in main if you like. Now to find the sum, we need to go to each and every element of the array. So we will use our standard nested for loop we learned for traversal. We have learned traversal loop earlier where our outer loop manages the rows. So run tilts array.length which is number of rows. An inner loop manages the columns, so runs till array 0 dot length, which gives us the number of columns. This loop starts from the first row and then traverses all columns of the row. It then goes to next row and traverses all columns of that row and so on. Inside the loop, we will do processing as per our program. Now in all sum, min, max, count kind of program, we need a variable which will hold our calculated value. So before the traversal loop, we will declare a variable sum and initialize it to zero. Inside the loop, we will just add each array element to the sum variable one by one. Once we have traversed the entire array, means we have added all elements, we will print the sum. This will give us the program to sum all elements of the array. Now the program could also be to find the sum of all diagonal elements of the array. Here we need to find the sum of only specific elements of the array. We know the condition for diagonal elements. So before the sum, we will just add a if condition for major and minor diagonal. This program will give sum of only diagonal elements. You could get multiple variations of this program, like sum of first and last row or first and last column. You just need to change the if condition and you can get the program as per your question. The next program we will see is where you are asked to find sum of each row of the array. This means for each row now you need to print the sum separately. We know our for loop traverses row by row. So what we will do is this time initialize the sum variable inside the first loop means moment we start processing each row. Inside the inner loop, it will traverse through all columns of the row and add it to sum. Now once all columns of the row are done, what we will do is move the print statement also inside as the last statement of the outer loop so that the sum is printed once all columns of a row are traversed. We can also put in row index in the print statement so that it can give us row wise output. Another variation of the program is that you could be asked to print column wise sum as well. Here what we will do is that instead of row wise, we will do column wise traversal. We will just swap the two for loops to do column traversal first and then row and print columns instead of rows. This will print total of all columns. Next program is where we have to find minimum element in an array. Again we will get in our standard traversal nested loop. The way we will solve this problem is that we will declare a variable which will hold our min value. We will traverse the entire array and if any value is less than min, we will copy that value in min. In our program, we will declare a variable min first. We normally initialize the variable to zero. Now important thing in max min kind of questions is that if you initialize your initial value to zero and suppose the array has all numbers greater than zero. So now by default zero becomes the min value and it will get printed. So in max and min kind of questions, always initialize the variable with first element of array and start by assuming it as the minimum value. Inside the loop, we will just check if any array element is less than the min value. If yes, we set min to that value. 
Once we have traversed the entire array, we print the final min value we have found. The program for maximum is also done the same way. This time we declare the max value outside the loop. Inside the loop, we will just check if any array element is greater than the max value. If yes, we set max to the value of that array element. Once we have traversed the entire array, we print the max value. The program could also be to find min value of every row separately. This means for each row now you need to do this processing. We know our loop traverses row by row. So what we will do is this time initialize the min variable inside the first loop means before we start processing all columns of the row. Note now min is initialized to first element of that row at column 0. Inside the loop, it will traverse through all columns of the row and check for min. Now once all columns of the row are done, we will move the print statement also inside the outer loop as the last statement of outer loop so that min value is printed before starting processing of the next row. We can put in row index 2 in the print so that it can give us row wise output. Now the program could also ask you to return min value of every row in a separate array or return the index where minimum value is stored in a separate array. Here we are receiving another array as a parameter which has two columns. In column 0 we have to return the min element and in column 1 we have to return the column index where min value is found. Here we will first set the first element of row as minimum in the new array. Inside the loop, the check condition is also the same. If element is lower, we copy that number in new array in column 0 and copy the column index of the element in the new array at column index 1. Similarly, if the program is to find the max of the columns in a new array, we will first swap the two for loops to do column wise traversal instead of row wise. We will assume first element of the column is the max and set that in the array. Inside the loop, we will just check if any element is greater than max. If yes, we copy that number in the new array at column 0 and copy the row index of the element in the new array at column index 1. Now you could also get count kind of programs like count all even numbers in the 2D array. Here we will initialize a variable count to 0 before we begin our traversal. Inside the loop, we will just check if the element is even. If yes, we just increment our count. Once we have finished the traversal, we will print the count. You could get multiple variations of the program like count numbers which are odd, buzz numbers, prime numbers, etc. You just need to change your if condition as per your program and your program is ready. If you have any doubts or questions, you can write to us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and goodbye.